He will complete the run, however, yep. getting the checkered flag. And let's see, this fourth lap should be pretty slow because he backed off to 218.094. Yep. Yep. Elio Castro Nevis is not out of the car. In fact, he's getting back in line just in case he needs it. Scott Dixon will be the next to qualify for the pole on our shootout here at Indianapolis. Scott Dixon has just taken the green flag on the back stretch on lap number one. He's our third qualifier in this second segment, the shootout. Hideki Muto just wrapped up his qualifying effort at the 223.487. Elio the first out and the fastest at 227.970. And now we can say that Elio is on the provisional pole. Here is Scott Dixon down to complete lap number one. 225.273. Not what they're hoping for. I mean, that's pretty fast until, unless you were already seen the 227.9, you're kind of like, that's the wind out of your sails. Scott was the pole sitter here in 2008, the year he won the Indianapolis 500. The 500 has been won the last two years by the pole sitter. Scott in 2008 and Elio last year. Two down, two to go for Scott Dixon. And the lap two to speed report is 225.345. A little bit quicker. Mike Hall, he, he categorizes Dixon. Dixon's a driver that responds. He does whatever he has to do at an incredible level to get the job done. But sometimes when you see what Penske's done here in Elio playing the speed, I mean, you, you only got so much speed in that car. As much as he's trimming it out and just trying to keep his hands as, as free as possible and not scrub any speed with that car, uh, someday just not your day. <laughs> Lap number three is the white flag comes out is 225.484, so he's picking it up every lap. Obviously has a very good race car, a well-balanced race car making that progression. It just, uh, with, what we, with what we've seen earlier, it just changed the whole tone of it a little bit, doesn't it? Man. Scott has never driven for anyone other than Chip Ganassi. This will be his eighth start as he comes down and looks at the checkered flag. And there is the checkered flag, 225.425, just slightly slower than, turn, uh, than uh, number three, and 225.382 is the four-lap average. And Robbie Floyd standing by with Hideki Muto, who was second out a few minutes ago. Robbie. Well, he's starting to uh, communicate with his crew right now. I, I just asked him, I said, well, it was a good start. And, and again, he's going to go out there again. They're going to try and, uh, you know, try and do a few adjustments with the car, but they grabbed him right at the last second. I know it might be a little bit too much inside information, but he said he was, his drawers were a little wet. And I don't know if that had anything to do with Elio Kesterneva's running right before him or not. Let's see if uh, we can sneak in here just a little bit. <laughs> I'm wanting to sneak in. Yeah. What did you say? That was cool. I told I told him about your wet underwear. How, how, how was it out there? You had that one little bobble look like it cost you. I mean, my first lap was awesome. I think, uh, you know, I, after I saw the Elio's qualified run, it's for us it's impossible. I think so. I just changed my mind to to do just our best we can, and uh, I think we came up. Uh, you know, last four laps, I lost a lot. So, you know, still what, we have one more chance to go. So we try again later. And no matter what, he'll tie his best ever qualifying effort a ninth place, Bob. And Eki's still with a smile on his face as Alex Tagliani takes to the two and a half mile oval with sparks coming from the other side of that car. Uh, Hideki was talking to Martin Pare, of course, his engineer has a history here, was with Danica Patrick for a long time. Yep. They have a great working relationship. Well, this has been, if there was a surprise during the entire week of practice and today, it's the incredible effort that Alex Tagliani has put into this car and the crew to make it so quick. Definitely a pole contender here. How was the warm-up? 
Well, he, speaking of the warm-up, it was average, but when you hear Roger Penske say, well, we're not solid because Tagliani hasn't run yet. When have you heard yeah. Roger Penske saying, you know, the guy we need to worry about is Tagliani, <laughs> and for a brand new team, what a pat on the back that is. Yep. No question. The fast racing team, Alex Tagliani, 226.381 for Alex. And again, we, we, we've heard a couple of folks say that they're just amazed what these guys have done with the little amount of running. I mean, they roll it out every day, and within two or three laps, they are at the top of the charts or in that top zone every day this past week. This guy's only Indy 500 start was last year, and he started from the back row, 33rd. He's gonna improve his position considerably for the start of this year's 500 as the second lap is completed, and it's a 226.756. He's moving up. be really fun for us if we could be able to tap in up here and see the onboard telemetry from the standpoint of seeing what these guys are doing with, with the tools on board. And we always hear everybody saying, hey, I, I, I adjusted this the wrong way or the right way, just to, to see how much work's going on in that cockpit. It's not just them having the hand on both the wheels and reaching out down, adjusting front sway bars, rear sway bars, weight jackers, just to always trying different things as you're going down the the front straight and the back straight. Drop down on the third lap to 226.059. And that's as Robbie said, because you're always chasing. And it doesn't take much of a slight adjustment or a change in how the tires feel or how the car sets to make that. So it's just a slight slip on that one speed-wise. Now, if he'd run first, we'd all be dancing, saying, <laughs> he's smoking fast. This yeah. is fantastic. But, you know, Castro Nemes just let the air out of everybody's run here, at <laughs> least for the first one. Oh, man. 225.838 on the fourth lap for the average of 226.258 for Alex Tagliani, our third qualifier here in the session. El uh, Elio Castro Nevis has not gotten out of his car. He's staying in the zone as he will watch his teammate, Horizon Team Penske driver, Will Power, take to the racetrack. Now, he did admit in his interview, he said, I can't do what Elio can do. Now, you never know. He can do a lot. He can do a lot. <laughs> Will Power came here to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in 2008, driving for KV Racing Technology. And ended up finishing 13th after a 23rd place start. And last year, 14th Penske started 9th and finished in 5th spot. He is currently the leader in the IZOD IndyCar Series point standings coming into the Indianapolis 500 after some very good races pre-500. And we heard Will say when, when we interviewed him earlier today that this is a new place for him, obviously, being a team Penske, but also he's never been in the position of going for the pole. He's never been in that mindset. So, so that's a whole new learning curve where Elio obviously has had multiple times of, of setting his sights on what to do with that. So this is the beginning of a long curve and a long career of, of great runs, I think, for this guy right here, Will Power. Absolutely. Green flag comes out, and here we go. 227.970 is the pole speed by his teammate Castro Nevis. Any good numbers? What do you got for a turn one number there when he comes back for us? He turned in at a 231.2. Wow. So nice numbers, not Elio numbers, but a good start speed wise. Twenty six point two seven nine. Two thirty one rolling into turn one. Yep, two thirty one point three that time. 
and think about that again, you know, they're mashing the gas down, they're not lifting off, you're turning flat out, 